Hi everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to the Fragrant Bunker. I have a wonderfully fun video for you today. As the title suggests and as the background suggests, these are the top five fun perfumes. And you know, God knows we need some light-hearted entertainment when it comes to perfumes, when it comes to life, when it comes to just everyday life, everyday routines, whether it be going to the office, going to school, dealing with family, just, you know, ah. <sighs> Let's bring some fun back into our lives. So I'm kind of dressed for the occasion. I prompted my AI bubbles uh, to generate a fun perfume shop with a lot of wonderful colors. And so we're gonna do this list of top five fun perfumes where the eye wants its part as well. Not just the nose, but also the eye. So in a way we are going to be looking at the bottles that also represent fun, but also the smell. The two are very uh, combined and linked. We oftentimes tend to forget the importance of bottle design in perfumes. In fact, there are very famous bottle designers and artists who are invited to design bottles, you know, just to convey the idea uh, that, that the smell, the poetic idea and vision that the smell inside the bottle represents. This is coincidentally why I'm so sad that every major house, but also niche house, they, they've kind of, somebody started thinking, let's save money and uh, let's streamline our bottles. So let's make our collections all have the same bottles because you don't have to manufacture different bottles. That saves you a ton of money. So let's kind of take away the individuality out of all our perfumes. You know, Guerlain in the past used to have a different bottle design for every perfume. Now they just condense it all to the same, you know. Uh, Hermes also with the Hermesons range. All have the same bottle, just different color. Whoa. Same shape, you know. Uh, Louis Vuitton also. They tried a little bit with their extraits to create a little kind of, you know, stopper, slightly different, but their most of their collection is streamlined, all the same bottle. Chanel is exclusives, same. As if these perfumes had no character, as if these perfumes needed, you know, don't need the bottle to help elevate the character. Now you could say, well, does the smell on its own has to do it? Sure, you could say that, but we are kind of sucking the creativity out of it by streamlining everything. Sometimes it's just a feast for the eyes to have a beautiful bottle to look at, even when you're not smelling the perfume, because it announces it announces the perfume in a way. So you could say, yeah, I'm all about the elegance, blah, blah, and I just want a streamlined bottle. But you see what I'm going with here? We're educating the consumer nowadays to not enjoy the pleasantries of life. We're, we're pushing the consumer to, to streamline the consumer, to take the creativity out of them, to take the, the desire for creativity out of them. We're brainwashing the consumer, in other words, to demand less of the brands. And the brands can start getting away with more. They can start charging you more for less, which is exactly what's happening in the luxury world. Now, Everything I say in this video is for entertainment purposes only, not rooted in truths or facts. Everything's alleged in just my opinion, and it is my opinion, that we should celebrate those few occasions where the brands actually did dare and did push the envelope in terms of also having fun with creating bottles that match the perfumes they're in. So here are my top five fun perfumes. And... Some of them have quite a bit of a twist and turn, you might say. So let's see, where do we begin? Well, I think we all know that we have to begin with Moschino. We have to begin with Moschino because, well, technically you could make the whole five list of Moschino perfumes because, I mean, most of them are very playful, but some of them really kind of pass the mark and become something completely sublime and otherworldly. And I'm going to start off with. Olive oil, Popeye's olive oil in three different sizes here. We got the uh, 25 mil, the 50 mil, the 100 mil, the olive oil, cheap and chic. Yes, it is kind of the silhouette of olive oil and it does have a heart shaped top. 
So this is not a nose like a lot of people think. Uh, Pierre Dinon designed uh, this bottle. He is the historic bottle designer that also did opium, for example, and Dolce Gabbana's Bourron, for example. So uh, this is her chignon, the back of her head. It's like she's walking away from you. That's the idea. So she's kind of turning her set, herself to you. This is not a nose. It is a chignon. And it is olive oil's dress. Uh, so originally this one came out in the 90s right after uh, Franco passed away, unfortunately, uh, due to complications connected to HIV and AIDS. There was no help back then. So, And so this one kind of came out right after he passed away. I did a review of this one and it, had a, it has a beautiful ad, a uh, television ad that played when this one came out. And it's an olive oil that, that is going to the funeral of Popeye. And of course, the the idea was that it is Franco Moschino's funeral, and she manages to bring him back to life while she sprays this perfume on herself as she kind of leans in to kiss um, a Popeye that's unalived. And then he wakes up and everybody's happy all over again. Such a beautiful fairy tale and kind of sad ending to Franco Moschino's legacy because there was that wishful thinking we all had back in the day of wanting him to come back again. So this perfume is so beautiful in its shape, but also in its smell. It's one of those rare instances where cyclamen, cyclamen is the dominant note. It's a, it's a synthetic note, but cyclamen delivers this beautiful powdery vision of a forest, but it's a fairy tale forest. It's fun. It's playful. It's very musky as well. It's a musky perfume uh, distributed by Euro Italia in the 90s, still to this day distributed by Euro Italia. Such a beauty. Even after all the reformulations, it's gorgeous. It did come in a little chubby round olive oil splash or the toilette bottle as well. Uh, this one uh, this one is also the toilette. It did come as an eau de parfum as well. I do have a 25 mil Extrait de Parfum bottle with a golden olive oil head in a spray form. Oh, sorry, this is a 30 mil, not a 25 mil. This is nowadays they do the 30 mil, but uh, back in the 90s they did a 25 mil as well, or the toilette, and there was a 25 mil Extrait de Parfum, which I do own, still sealed and packaged. They don't produce that anymore. It does have the golden olive oil head. And then I have the little splash of the toilette, chubby olive oil, super cute, also with a golden head, uh, also in my collection. And I have the soap and the cream, the body lotion, um, the shampoo, the, the, uh, the bath and shower gel. I mean, they made a whole collection of this. It's so much fun because the names are also hilarious. They they called uh, the, the soap, they called it the soap of irony or the milk the body lotion was called the irony milk because you can't drink it. It's ironic. You can only put it on the body. The whole collection was so playful, beautiful packaging, and the bottles are just divine. The original sizes were 25 and 50 mil. So this is the 50 mil. The, this is kind of where the proportions of olive oil as a bottle are made the way they were meant to be. The 30 mil is slightly different to the 25 mil and the 100 mil you see they did not enhance the head they're using the head of the 50 mil for the 100 mil so hence it looks a little bit stumpy the body looks bigger than the head should be so the proportions the best proportions for this bottle design if we're good if we, if we are to respect uh the original is to go with the 50 mil or the 25 mil spray so this is the original shape the 50 mil and it is a beauty brings back the best of the 90s. It's a soapy, musky, cyclamen, flirtatious, zesty, like, no, I don't want you, but I do, type of vibe. And yes, it brought back Popeye from the darkness into the light again. Love this perfume. And in fact, then there's a lot of flankers. This one does not fall into my list, but I just wanted to show you that there's a lot of flankers of Cheap and Chic by Moschino. This is the I Love Love flanker uh, with a yuzu note, a citrusy note, very light for summer. It's a beauty as well. This is very Y2K era, <laughs> as you can see. So, you know, they came in a lot of different variations. You could technically swap the heads. You could, There you go. You could put the orange olive oil head onto the OG bottle, although it doesn't look as good. It looks much better this way. But you could play with them. 
it makes it even more fun, all the different bottles. There's a lot of different flankers of uh, Cheap and Chic. I just happen to have one, but there's at least another four. There's clouds. Uh, then there's another one with flowers all over it. So you could kind of exchange the outfits. Well, the heads at least, or the chignons. The second one, uh, it, it's a beauty because of the outfit more than because of the perfume, to be perfectly honest with you. I love Jean-Paul Gaultier's Classique, okay? And I love all the iterations and the limited editions that come out with the different outfits. But the most fun one came out a couple of years ago. I wish it were Classique Eau de Toilette, but they did the Eau Fraiche version of it, which is candy cane heavy with ginger note. It's okay. It's very summery, but I just wish they kept it the classic classique, but with the fun outfit, the most fun outfit that I personally think Gautier ever came up with for classique, and that would be Betty Boop. Betty Boop adorning the corset, the Jean-Paul Gautier corset. This is so cute. And I do have um, a kind of like a promotional shopping tote that came with the launch of this one. Popeye came out for Le Mal and uh, Betty Boop for Classique. And uh, so the, the tote, it's like a cotton flat, you know, one of those promotional items they give you with the perfume. So I did get the tote bag. When I bought this perfume, it has the Marinier stripes and then there's a Betty Boop printed on it and says Gautier. But it's so cute. I adore Betty Boop. And I adore the 20s and 30s, well, the pre-prohibitionism and then post-prohibitionism cartoons. I mean, Betty Boop uh, went through a lot of changes, uh, you know, in the cartoon uh, from the original posts of the cartoon to later. Uh, look at that Gautier logo in the back and the kind of the tightening, the embossed tightening here of the corset of the guepierre. This is actually a guepierre. And so it's a beautiful, light, light, suave, rosy pink and then we got Betty Boop and of course what is she wearing she is wearing the iconic the iconic Jean-Paul Gaultier Guépierre just like the one Madonna wore on her Blonde Ambition tour and you see it the little birds and we have the little classic Jean-Paul Gaultier tattoo vibe going on there um so the smell, like I said, I could do with less of the, the that kind of candy cane sugary vibe in here, cotton candy moment, but it's fun, it's playful. And it's, to me, this is fun, like total, total fun. So gotta love it. So we got a Jean-Paul Gaultier moment. Number three, well, honey, you know what else is fun? S, E. And, well, the most fun bottle I ever found, going in that direction without completely spelling out the shape, <laughs> would be this little limited edition. The phallic symbol of Yves Saint Laurent. Now, this one is you know, a little bit scratched up at the bottom because it stands... So we got the YSL logo. It is Lom. Now that's the fun, that's the fun, uh, the fun part about this perfume that it's called Lom, the man. And in fact, um, as you can see, whoop, it's very fun. And then it does have a little bit of semen in there <laughs> floating around. It's a green YSL logo, which with the green screen here, you can't really see, but there's a green YSL floating in a little bubble on top. There it is. And um, you lift the bottle out this way and then you flip it and you got yourself a spray. Very delicate thin glass designed by Jean Novel. So Jean Novel, and it even says on the bottle, L'Homme Yves Saint Laurent, designed by Jean Novel, 90 milliliter eau de toilette, made in France. It's the classic Yves Saint Laurent. Lom fragrance from also the Y2K era, well, 2010s. And in this limited edition phallic bottle, and Jean Novel, because they commissioned him to design a limited edition version of the bottle, in his words, and I paraphrase here, he said, well, because it's 
the symbol of masculinity, and that would be the phallus. And he said, and yet I wanted to render this symbol of masculinity in a very fragile way. So it is a stiff, hard thing. But he said, it's made in the thinnest glass possible. It's very fragile. This can break so easily. So that stiffness and that hardness, that masculine intensity is rendered very, very suave and soft by a very, very thin glass. So it's very fragile, actually. And that's the fun part about it. You never know when it's going to break. Look at the little Yves Saint Laurent thing kind of floating, going up. Oh, there it goes. And there it goes again. I mean, it's super fun. This bottle is amazing. So it's one of those special pieces in my collection. This is a very heavy metal part at the bottom with the YSL logo. And this YSL logo is not standing upwards. It's standing downwards. This is coincidentally the shape of the stopper of the classic bottle of L'Homme by Yves Saint Laurent, but the limited edition, of course, had the phallic symbol. If this ain't fun, I don't know what is. You know what I mean? Now, the smell of the perfume itself, it's your classic wannabe mask for mask type of smell. Slightly musky going into that fougere aquatic vibe. You know, it's hints of of barber shop nuance in there, but uh, let's just say this is not the best perfume I ever smelled. Okay, the perfume itself maybe might be fun under the sheets, but not so much on the streets. I Y K Y K. Thumb up this video if you're enjoying it. Thumb it up and subscribe. Also, you know, I thought for a second there. Let me put. Uh, Anna Sui's perfume bottles in the selection. I decided not. Anna Sui does like some crazy bottles, like they're the mermaid bottle, the elephants, like really complex unicorn. But those were borderline. They were, you, yes, fun, but they were kind of borderline tacky in a weird way. So they just letting you know they did not end up in the in the final selection. I kind of did want to streamline it to. A, a certain form of elegance. And I thought Anna Sui was a little bit over the top. Like if I were to choose to make a list of like the top five tackiest perfume bottles, Anna Sui would be in that selection, probably for sure. Now that was number four. I know that was number three. Okay. Number four is a relatively new perfume launched just a couple of years ago. Um, it's not the first time that something like this has been done, but I just, the, for the mere fact that it is still in production, it's not a limited edition, you can still find it today. It made it to this list. It does have a ton of flankers, but uh, I I personally prefer the, the first one, the original one, and that would be Yes I Am by Cacharel, because it's a lipstick in a really chunky bottle. <laughs> it's got, and, and then you kind of push, you push the, you see the out, out here comes the perfume and it's a, you push the lippy, it has the Cacharel logo on top. This is the first version of Yes I Am, not a flanker. I adore it. It has this milk caramel vibe to it. Warm, inviting. It is floral, but it's also caramelly and soft. So it does not smell at all like a lipstick, but it is a fun smell. It's refreshing, it's invigorating, it's zesty, slightly flirtatious, very modern, and youthful in a good way. For any age to wear it, it just smells youthful and fun. It's really, really, really cute. So Yes I Am is definitely a fun bottle. Cacharel always nails it. Cacharel has at least one good perfume every decade. You know, they had Anaïs Anaïs in the 70s, they had Lulu in the 80s, they had Eden in the 90s, and then they got Yes I Am. They also had Noah. I mean, Cacharel, slow and steady wins the race. I have a huge admiration for Cacharel perfumes. I really, really love them. And this, this one also falls into that kind of classic Cacharel roster for me. And that would be Yes, I Am. Super fun, playful bottle. There you have it. Number five, of course, we had to have another Moschino in number five. And that would be... I mean... If this is not the winner, I don't know what is. It is the Moschino Teddy Bear. This is not a Moschino toy, toy, perfume bottle, perfume. It is a three-dimensional teddy bear. As you can see, it's a plushie. 
He is squishy. He is soft. He wears a t-shirt that you can actually put on or take off. He's wearing a Moschino t-shirt. Super soft. But then you could kind of decapitate the bear. <laughs> Even more fun. And you get a 50 mil fragrance inside. You cannot take this out. It is kind of sealed in there. It's a glass bottle. Euro Italia distribution. So you, you cannot take it out. Uh, the bottle outside of the teddy. You can take the teddy bear out of the perfume, but not the perfume out of the teddy bear. Well, you could milk him dry, you know. <laughs> and then it... Oh, it's, it's such a 2014 smell. You know, I remember when uh, Jeremy Scott made it to Moschino and he started designing for Moschino his first collection. This was also his first perfume. He didn't design the perfume, but the concept of the teddy bear perfume was his. And uh, this is not a Moschino toy. This one has been discontinued. You can't really, they don't make this one anymore, you guys. So this one is very, very, very precious and rare and special. And it has an kind of a weird Ambroxan note in it. It's floral, but very synthetic. And it's very, very much 2014. It's kind of the early 10s era. It's a, it's something you wouldn't expect from a bear. Well, you, you kind of would. You would maybe because it does have a woodsy accord, but it's flirtatious. There's like a synthetic innovation somewhere in there, which makes it fun. It makes it playful. And it's such a beautiful little piece to have in your collection. I just, I love the little, I mean, it's so fun. You just, he has glass eyes or plastic, but I mean, you know, and a little plastic nose. So he's not, you know, cheaply done. You know, he has a little contrast on the ears there, on the paws as well. Like I said, they can take off the T-shirt. And we have the Magritte kind of context there. Like, you know, like, uh, this is not a pipe, you know. This is not a Moschino toy. But it actually, it isn't a toy, but it is. Super fun. Super fun. And because you've stuck around so long and because it wouldn't be fun if we weren't bending and breaking the rules a little bit, I thought it would be fun to add a sixth perfume just as a little fun moment. Boy, oh boy, we're going to stick with Jeremy Scott for this one because like I said, Jeremy Scott was also co-designer of this little bottle here. Uh... There is a special, special perfume that went, that did not see distribution. It was, it did get a very limited distribution, but only through like really complicated ways and shops couldn't get it. Uh, I had good connections back then uh, with Adidas. And so I managed to get my hands on this. And this, boy, oh boy, does this fall under fun. This is uh, an Adidas sneaker box. But as you can see, it says Eau de Toilette. Jeremy Scott. This is the sneaker box. Cotti distribution. Made in Spain. Has a magnetic closure. And guess what's inside? So it has this magnetic clasp. Let me just open it up for you so it doesn't fall out. Ooh, and we have the iconic Jeremy Scott winged sneaker, the Wings 2.0. The first Wings, I'll just show you in a second. The first wing sneaker had the wings here on the side. This is the 2.0 Jeremy Scott sneaker. And yes, Adidas collaborated with Cotti and Jeremy Scott to design the 2.0 winged sneaker perfume. And perfume bottle. This is amazing, isn't it? Let me let me come in close. Of course I had to end my fun perfumes on a very very special note. How it I don't I don't know if it can get more fun than this. Look, the whole sneaker at the bottom has you know, the whole sneaker vibe uh, and then the wings basically are the stopper, right? So are the lid of the there you go. You take the wings off and you get the perfume bottle and you spray it. 
It's Cotti. It's a limited edition. Cotti was not going to create a masterpiece for a limited edition perfume, obviously, you know. So it's it's a woodsy accord, slightly ambery woodsy floral accord. I've reviewed this perfume on my channel, so you can go watch the full review of this perfume back in 2015. It's like a cypressy, woodsy, balmy accord. Slightly spicy. It's actually really beautiful. The, the perfume smells clean, streamlined, nothing special. You know, like I said, you're not going to create a masterpiece for a limited edition run. But for what it's worth, this kind of sparkly, woodsy accord is beautiful. It does not smell, for all you foot fetishists out there, it doesn't smell like dirty socks. It doesn't smell like dirty sneaker. None of that. It smells of like pine, woods. A little bit, it goes into that direction like Chanel's uh, Paris Edinburgh, the Le Zoo, uh, fragrance. It, it has that petrichor vibe about it. it. It's a little bit, it goes into that petrichor uh, smell. And... Just like the Jeremy Scott for Adidas sneakers, this one as well, on the soles, they had the logo of Jeremy Scott in him. The glass bottle, of course, also bears the Jeremy Scott insignia right over there. See it? There it is. What a beauty. I thought there's no fun perfume collection without a sneaker turned perfume bottle but the sneaker has wings on it the perfume smells of a weird petrichor note this thing is a masterpiece and it comes in a little tiny sneaker box too so we'll go we'll go i hope you've enjoyed this video guys um, maybe you have uh, also a, a fun perfume that you love so much that you want to kind of share let me know in the comment section down below if there's one that you would particularly put on this list but you know, there, there you go. I'm also wearing, by the way, today, Jeremy Scott for Adidas from his uh, Adidas era. This was from back in 2014 or 13 when he did the teddy bear sneakers and the panda sneakers. He also did the, oh, this, did this turn upside down? Yeah. My, my cabriolet turned upside down. Um, he also did this shirt with the pink teddy bear, the brown teddy bear, the panda. And then after that, oh, and then there's also the rainbow one which is right here. Super cute. Ah, those were the days, you guys. For those of you who also maybe remember me from my main channel, uh, I was reviewing a lot of sneakers back in 2014 and 15 and uh, a lot of Jeremy Scott pieces as well. So this shirt is from that time. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, thumb it up, subscribe. And until next time, never give up on fun love. Bye.